Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I have yet another module to share with you that comes from my friends over at Rayx. I've partnered many times before with uh, Rayx as a company to show you GPS and LoRaWAN modules and this is one of their latest one in the series. It's the RYS8839 and it's an ultra low power dual band L1 and L5 uh, multi constellation GNSS module. So it comes with the Sony CXD5110 GF engine. It supports dual bands L1 and L5, and it also supports multi constellation. So it works with GPS, GLONASS, Beidou, Galileo satellites, and a few others that are basically unknown to me. And it comes with additional features like the embedded digital knowledge filters and the spectrum analyzer. If we take a look at the datasheet for the module, we can see that the module is super tiny. It goes on uh, just 11 millimeters by 8 millimeters and it's 2.2 millimeters thick. What I have here is the what Rayx calls its light version and it's a breakout module that uh, has the original ARYS uh, 8839 module on a PCB and it breaks the power pins as well as the UART pins so we can interface it with a module like this. This is also a product of Rayax. This is the Rayax Air Wireless 135 level shifter board that allows you to talk to any of their modules uh, over serial. It, it comes with the CP2102 chip so it can be easily talked to over the computer and you can also select multiple voltages so you can level shift between 5 volts, 3.2 and 1.8 volts. At the moment I have this connected where both voltages are set at 1.8 on the selectors. I have all of the jumpers so I can connect the USB to the serial output and then I have it connected to the serial input uh, to the UART interface of the module. TX on the board is connected to RX on the module and vice versa. RX is connected to TX so you need to have them switched so it works with UART and I'm powering the board with 3.3 volts and ground is shared on both. The module comes with an external antenna that has this mini connector that goes to a breakout and we have this uh, active antenna that also is provided by Rayx. The nice thing about this one is that it comes with uh, magnets inside so you can place it on top of a vehicle or any metal surface so you can track it. The idea for today is that we go over on the setup. So I'll show you how this device can be talked to on the computer. We'll connect it via USB with the provided module. And then in a future video, we will try and combine this one with the uh, LoRa module that we previously saw. And that is this uh, Air Wireless 993 module that we uh, saw on my distance testing where I was able to communicate for about 20 kilometers with uh, another module. And what's interesting about this one is that it also works on the Helium network. Helium is a blockchain LoRa network and apparently it has coverage in my local area. So I want to give that a try and see if I can use it to have this GPS tracker sending data over the Helium network to my home assistant setup. If we look at the specs of the module, we can see that it uh, requires really, really low power. It's powered, as we said, by 1.8 volts, and it only requires 16 milliamps of current uh, during the satellite tracking, while the acquisition only takes 24. If the module is kept at the idle, then it only requires two milliamps, which makes it perfect for battery applications. When the device is first powered and uh, requires a position fix, then it takes about 24 seconds for it to acquire a signal and position. While during a hot start, it only requires one second to continue and it gets the accuracy of about one meter. And it only weighs 0 0.8 grams, which makes it perfect for small devices that where we need to have them mobile or if we want to have them uh, wearable on people or pets or whatever. The light version of the module comes with its own uh, 1.8 and 0.8 uh, voltage regulator. These are both needed by the module and 
it, we can power it from either 3.3 or 5 volts. And even though this can be powered from 3.3 or 5 volts, all of the logic levels are 1.8 volts. So be careful when you're connecting this module with uh, an old MCU or ESP32 because they both operate on voltage levels of 3.3. So you would need something like the level shifter that I have here to connect that, or you would need to integrate your own level shifter that can switch between 1.8 and 3.3 volts. To test out the module, I'm basically following the example that they have in their documentation. So I have the RYLS 135 level shifter that I have connected to the light module, to the RYS 8839 light module. So we have ground and ground connected. Uh, here, instead of using five volts, I'm powering mine from 3.3 volts, but it should be the same because this one then has two voltage regulators, one for 1.8 volts and the other one for 0.8. And the takes is connected to the RX and the uh, RX is then connected to takes. So keep in mind that again, this needs to be switched. Then I have the connector cable that goes on the onboard uh, antenna connector and that converts it to the connector on the antenna. If we have an enclosure where this one is housed, then this connector would usually be sitting outside on the case and we can then route the antenna wherever we want and we can connect it to the connector on the housing. To test out the module, I have now the antenna routed outside through the window. So we can have a clear view of the sky. This is important when we are working with the GPS signal because in order for us to get a good position, we need to have the antenna outside with a good view of the sky. That comes here and then I'm connecting the module to my computer with this extension cable. So in order to start communicating, Rayax is also providing a software application, which is a GNSS monitor that we can use to connect the device. What we need to do is first set up the target to be CXD5610. This is the chip that runs on the module. So it's really important that we have that set selected. And then under the setup menu, we can choose the serial port. And in my case, that's COM8. And if you don't know how you can get this, uh, which is the correct port, then you could open your device manager. And under ports, you should see a reference to the Silicon Lab CP210X chips, USB to UART bridge, uh, which in my case is COM8. So I'm going to select that one. And for the baud rate, I'm going to choose 115,200, which is the default as per the documentation. I have the check version after connection, after connected option enabled. So when I choose OK, I should be able to see the version of the module here, which is basically correct one. And we can know that we have uh, communication with the module. Now we need to first click on this button, which would then uh, send the idle command to the module. And under the satellite selection, we can choose which one we want to, to have. For the moment, I'm going to select all of them and I'm gonna to choose to send that information to the module. We get the GNS uh, done command, which means that the, the satellite selection was sent successfully to the module. So we can now tell it to hot start and this should start releasing some data. One by one, we would start to see satellites appearing here and we would, as soon as we get a position fix, we would see it on this window here and we get a latitude and longitude values, which from obvious reasons I'm gonna hide. And we can see that we now get, start to get more and more satellites. We are now up to 44 from all of the different constellations. Let's try and wait a bit more. So you can see as more and more satellites are uh, found, then the position is refined and we can choose to have a different network. So you can see this is all within eight meters. And even though I have the antenna outside, it's not really a scientific position because it's placed on the windowsill that is only having a view to the sky, to the sky on one side. And that is why it's seeing 
a lot more satellites on one side and a lot less on the other. Uh, and also with a much worse signal strength. We'll give this a go for a few more seconds. As we saw on the, dat on the data sheet, it uh, requires at least uh, 24 seconds in order to get a good location. So after a while, you could see that we are now up to 68 satellites and the position kind of stabilized. And when I plugged the, the uh, latitude and longitude within Google Maps. It gives me basically spot on the location of my house within, I would say, I don't know, two or three meter where the um, the antenna is placed on the outside. And with that, we can confirm that the module is working as expected. Obviously, it will be uh, much more precise when we go outside with the antenna to have a clear view of the sky on all directions so it can properly triangulate the position and also give us information about the, the speed and the direction that we are going. And ideally, that's my plan for the next video where I'm going to hook this module to an ESP32 that will also have the Helium module connected to it. And with it, we should be able to get the correct GPS position, send it over with the Helium module to the Helium network, and from there, pull it inside my home assistant. So the idea is that with that setup, I could be able to truck uh, an asset like my car within home assistant. And we could also use geofencing uh, and define zones within home assistant to trigger certain automations and to trigger certain alerts or whatever else that we might need. All in all, this was a relatively short video about this module, which I think has a great potential. If you want to see the full project where we connected with the Helium network, then be sure to subscribe. If you have any questions about any of the modules or how I connected it or how I tested it with the software, then be sure to leave them down in the comments and I would see you all in the next one. Cheers.